Alright, there we go. What's up everyone? My name is Eric and you're watching Cyborg MTG here on YouTube Gaming. Thanks everyone for coming out. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button as we get into a double devs deck. That's right, he put out another double deck tech. So we've got two decks for you guys tonight. We've got a budget deck that won't set you back very much. And then we have a competitive deck that is not actually very expensive compared to most competitive decks. So... <laughs> Let's get started with some Orzov. Should be a, a ton of fun. Uh, apparently this is Dev's favorite guild. So uh, maybe that's why we got the, the double deck tech. Um, anyway, we're going we're gonna to start out here with uh, the budget. This is not the budget list. Let's start out with the budget list. Here we go. Um, so if you guys want to check out the deck tech itself, uh, there is there's a link up there with a little information I if you'll click it it'll take you over to his deck tech but I'm gonna go over the the gist of the deck really quick now he did say that if you have access to the Orzov lands you can go ahead and you know and upgrade that I'm not gonna do that even though we definitely have access to uh, to the lands I'm just gonna play it as is and then uh, we're gonna play one game with the budget deck and then we're gonna get into two games with the more competitive version of the deck but that being said I'm not necessarily saying that the budget decks not a competitive deck the deck looks really really sweet and as long as we can avoid you know cards like cry of carnium we should be all right so uh, let's take a look at the Orzov afterlife aristocrats deck that dev has put together as far as removal goes there's not a ton in the deck itself We've got four copies of Mortify. Uh, this will destroy target creature or enchantment at instant speed. So not a not a bad three mana spell. Uh, but f as far as everything else in the deck goes, eh, we're basically just uh, basically just wanting to uh, make dudes and, and sacrifice those dudes for their their afterlife triggers. Um, we get to have a lot of value here with uh, T Tessa Karlov. Uh, we've got um, our Blood Artist here, Vindictive Vampire. Four mana for a Blood Artist does hurt a little bit, but yeah, I guess a 2-3 is better than a 0-1. I don't know. Uh, we've got Pitiless Plunder. Uh, Pitiless Plunder is just going to give us additional resources and you know mana um, from, from our artifacts. Heaven forbid we have you know Tasa Karlov out. We'll get even more mana for that. So, yeah, we'll, uh, should be should be pretty sweet. You like, you like the promo mortifies? I've had these for a long time. I've always liked collecting promo cards. Um, even though I have gotten rid of quite a few of them, uh, promos here on Magic Online are like really, really cheap. And it's really simple to, um, to augment your deck with some, some shinies. I like shinies. Anyway, um, we've got a lot of afterlife creatures here. Ministrant of Obligation. If you guys watched last night's um, you know games, we we had actually had a deck that had quite a few of these cards in it. Minister of Obligation, and we had the Orzov Enforcer. Just a little um, you know two mana one two with Death Touch has Afterlife. Technically, you're getting three two worth of power spread out over time. Never on the battlefield at the same time. That sort of thing. Um, we've got Haunted Witness, which is the honorable Afterlife creature, right? Uh, he is. Um, he, According to Dev, he's been doing the afterlife thing long before we had afterlife. But uh, if you're if you've been playing in standard, you're no stranger to Haunted Witness, annoying little creature that gives you a um, lifelink soldier. Now it's not you know Doom Traveler or Doom Traveler, is that right? Yeah, Doom Traveler that would die and then give you a spirit. But uh, you know one one with lifelinks, not bad either. We've got Gutter Bones who. 
He's just really hard to kill. He's really, really hard to kill, especially if you can keep doing damage to your opponent. And that's not exactly hard when we've got a lot of flying spirits available to us. So we've also got the Imperious Oligarch, which um, just allows us to, you know, have a little bit of vigilance. And, and it's it's our more most aggressive uh, card here on the two-drop slot. And then when we get into um, the sideboard, you'll see that we've got um, copies of Duress, Golden Demise, uh, Profane Procession, Kaya's Wrath. Uh, Kaya's Wrath, pretty pretty sweet spell here. We've got Argyle's Bloodfast uh, to allow us to draw more cards and works technically as a sack outlet later in the game. We've also got Ethereal Absolution. Uh, this card has actually been really, really good every time I've played it, but mainly if you pull this in a limited format, you can resolve it you're probably going to be able to take over the game. So definitely a limited bomb. Um, I'm interested to see it get played a little bit more in standard, and uh, we'll see where it goes. And if it's going to fit anywhere, I believe this Afterlife deck is exactly where it'll be. So I, I like what Dev's got going on here. We've also got a couple copies of Consecrate and Consume, which target uh, player is going to have to sacrifice the creature with the greatest power amongst creatures they control, and then we're going to gain life equal to that power. So, pretty sweet, even if we're just using the Consecrate um, aspect of it and, you know, putting some poor soul to rest, we get to draw a card. So, not bad. I like the card. Profane Procession, probably one of the most under uh, used or underutilized pieces of removal in standard right now. Wonderful piece of, uh, piece of removal. So, that's the deck. Um, let's... Uh, Let's, let's go get into some games, right? Shall we? We shall. We shall. All right. So, SoftBanks looking for a player. Jesse B. Baker. What's up, Jesse? How you doing? What's up, Robert? Let's turn them sideways, right? Let's, let's, let's turn some things sideways. Justin Clay, how you doing? Loves Orzov, do you? Well, it's not the fastest hand in the world. We've got a little bit of removal, and we can start applying some pressure to the battlefield on turn three. But it's still kind of a bad hand. I'm going to keep it because the hand is definitely borderline. But it's still very, very slow. I'm not sure that we're going to get like tons of other really powerful draws. We could end up like gutter bones, gutter bones, gutter bones, and then kill our opponents extremely quickly, but that also may not happen, so we'll see what happens here. More land. Ah, oh, well, thank you, Magic the Gathering. Thank you. It's just what I always wanted. What's up, Jason? How you doing, buddy? Well, what do you got, opponent? What do you got? Let's let's do this. Let's go. Come on, SoftBanks. SoftBanks. Oh well. What's up, James Carr? How you doing? That's great to hear, Jason. Glad you're doing well. I have been out and about all day long, and you know what? I am tired. I'm ready to. I'm ready to, to play me a couple games of Magic, wind down for the day, chill with you fine people, and then take myself to bed. It's uh, it's just been a long one. <clears throat> Alright, opponent. What do you got? Um, hello. Good luck. Have fun. Maybe that maybe that pushes, pushes things along. I... Okay, so one thing that gets me about Magic the Gathering, as far as online play goes, and even in paper, one of the most iconic things to say to your opponent, you sit down in front of them, you play against them on Magic Online, is good luck, have fun. How come the things that they chose to allow us to say to our opponents, nice, on... on uh, Magic Arena. Good luck, have fun wasn't one of them. 
Like, do they not pay attention to their own culture? Hmm. What's up, Mitch Wells? How are you? You're watching uh, me for the last hour before you go to work? Well, if our opponent will hurry up, Jesse, I will get you some gameplay, man. Uh, you know what, though? The replays will always be up, so you'll be able to catch them later. You're tired as well, Mitch. Understood, man. It's um, It's been bill day for me, so, you know, you're out and about. You know, go pay all the bills and then go grocery shopping and come home, make you some make you some food. and Oh, yeah, it's just been a day. Dust Till Dawn Gaming, thank you to my newest patron. Thank you very much, Dust Till Dawn Gaming. I, uh, I appreciate that. Um, another fellow streamer, by the way. Great modern streamer. He's always toying around with some new modern decks. He loves his beloved Burn, though. 64-year-old wears people's out. Oh, man, yeah, I've got a... <laughs> I've got a two-year-old of my own. What's up, Jan? Man, we've got Jan and Dusk here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're being raided, everyone. If, if Space Marine shows up, I know I'm being raided. Okay. Um, our opponent has done a good job at forcing my hand. He got me. You win. You win, opponent. You beat me. I'm going to concede match. Oh, opponent. Why must... Why must you be this way? You don't know what he's up to. Well, I would hate to speculate, Dusk. Hola, be informed. Um, hola, como estas? Yeah, something like I guess. I don't. My Spanish is not that great. Seems like as soon as I moved away from Arizona, I just started losing Spanish. What? Now we don't have black sources. This is why you need multiple sets of split lands, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Um, I mean, I could get into an um, ministrant of obligation on three, which I was willing to do last game. Do we chance it? I mean, it's it's a hand of gas as long as we pull some land. I think I have to. I think I have to risk it. I'm just going to risk it for the biscuit here. Carnival Carnage has earned a spot in your heart right next to Blightning. That's a card you want to play, but you're usually in the wrong colors. I know that feeling. Come on, Black Source, show it to me. I'll take the Guild Gate now, not later. All right. The deck looks super weak to uh, Carnium, though. Yes, yes. Um, Cry of Carnium is... De Cry of the Carnium is definitely the card that's going to hold the Aristocrats decks down. Oh. All right. We may just scoop this up and and um, go fix the mana base. Like just running two color with only four split lands, it's gonna be difficult. Land. Oh man, it's another planes. Well, at least I can make a play. It's possible it just gets countered here. Absorb at this point is not great. I mean, we haven't applied any pressure, and he's already gained three life at this point. And if he absorbs this, he'll gain three more life, which he did. All right. The pressure's on now. And this is the problem I've had with Orzov lately, is um, that the creatures from Orzov, even though they have really good effects at giving you additional bodies after they're gone, uh, they're just not applying enough pressure. Pressure. Now, I, I know we didn't get started playing cards until turn three, and then we're not playing anything else. Yep. Um, I promise there are black sources in this deck. There are black sources in the deck.
purple shirt. It's like maroon, man. What? What's going on with this light? This shirt ain't purple. Uh, not that I have a problem with purple, but, you know. Okay. Oh, all right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm going to be that arsehole that just says we ain't playing magic. I'm going to concede. And we're going to play the deck. We're going to play the deck. But one of the things Deb said in the video is you're more than allowed to, if you have access, add the other lands in. So we want isolated chapels. Definitely want some isolated chapels. All right, so I want four of these and then we want some godless shrines right goldless hey maroon there we go all right godless shrines I'm gonna take out one two three but not four guild gates and then we're gonna take out seven other lands so let's go ahead and take out Three swamp, three plains. We need one more land. Did I take out too many? Oh no, I did take out too many. So we need to add a plains or a swamp. I think the deck has a lot more black in it than it does white. I'm going to go with the swamp. So that leaves us with a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight swamps. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planes. And then uh, we have nine split lands here. Um, seems, seems better. No other changes. We're just going to jump back in the lobby and see if we can cast spells this time. How do you guys feel about that? We actually want to cast some of the things that we're playing. Right. I mean, because the three drop's great, but it's usually not as good on turn four or five. Well, when it comes to budget, I think one of the first things that you should always get if you want to be in a set of colors is the mana. Um, it's very important to be able to cast your spells, and you know what? I'll keep it. Now, this is a two-land hand like we had earlier, but it's automatically just looking sweeter because we have mana. We don't have a one-drop, so no point in paying life for that. Look at that. We made a, we made a turn two cast. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You love the white-black control decks of Eldritch Moon Standard? Hmm. So we can pretty much do whatever we want this game. Um. I thought that he said that he had the, like, the uh, Sacrifice Outlet in this deck. We're playing against Jun. That's interesting. I think I want to keep adding to the battlefield. So, I'm going to go ahead and play our Ministrant of Obligation. Before you even think to build a deck, you need to have the lands for it. Right? The lands, the lands pretty much tell me whether or not I am in or... He's targeting me with a shock on his... So, he is that on to light up the stage. Yep, there it is. Light up the stage. See, that feels bad. When your spell that is normally supposed to be reserved for removal has to be activated so that you can use your draw spell. Hmm. I don't know. I do like the idea of Midnight Reaper here. I'm not opposed to letting him keep this for a moment. I think I want to play Tesa. Alright, so let's look at things. We've got four mana. 
I don't think anything matters before attacks because he's tapped out. So we can go ahead and attack. And then we've got four mana. If we want to like maximize mana usage, we play a four mana spell, right? We get Taste of Karlob down or we get Vindictive Vampire down. Otherwise, we go for a Midnight Reaper and Midnight Reaper or Mortify. I'm not interested in Mortifying the Argyle's Bloodfast. Not yet, anyway. I, I would be interested in, in it a little bit later, but I think we can hold off for a moment. But if we do hit another land, we're looking at a 5-mana play next turn, which could be the Imperialist Oli Oli Imperial Imperious Oligarch and a Mortify or a Midnight Re I think I'm just playing Tesa. Yeah, I'm just going to play Tesa. I mean, if he's got a if he's got a lava coil, we'll see it with the Tesa. If he plays a creature, like we pretty much get to hold it down because of Tesa. I mean, he he can't block like our Afterlife 2 guy and give us four dudes in the air unless he's willing to sweep the board. Growth Chamber Guardian. Okay. And he has the mana to do things with said Growth Chamber Guardian. Um, didn't hit another land, so I really want to just hold up Mortify here. I think I just get to swing with everything. He blocks Tesa, puts the mana into Growth Chamber Guardian, then I Mortify it with the trigger on the stack, and he doesn't get the plus 1-1 one, one counter or the Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, I like swinging. If I, if I kill it before he goes to do this, then then um, we just kind of get blown out. So I'm going to let him go ahead and pay and put the ability on the stack. I love it when a plan comes together. Look out for Bedevil! I am definitely worried about um, I'm definitely worried about some kill spell, but I just don't really know what it is right now. Vivian Reed, well, that's a problem. That must be dealt with. All right, so there's Isolated Chapel. This means we get to make multiple plays this turn. Do we swing at Vivian here? I mean, we can hit her for five. And the card he revealed was Rekindling Phoenix. We can hit him for five and put him at six. He plays Rekindling Phoenix for four of his mana, leaving up a maximum of three mana next turn, if he plays a land, of course, to play something else. Yeah, I'm going to go for the Midnight Reaper Oligarch. I add much more to the battlefield this way. I think I've got to go for it. Just add him. I, I really think that I have to apply the pressure. I know I, I, I have to be worried about Vivian, and I can't kill Vivian this turn, but I can make our opponent fairly weak. And then he has to put up a lot of blockers for next turn. And then next turn we can also play the Vindictive Vampire. Um, all right. Like, I hate leaving a, a planeswalker on the battlefield. 
There's the shock. Do we get double triggers? Look at those draw spells. Look at that. Love it. Love it. All right. There's the Rekindling Phoenix, and he has the three mana. Gruel Spellbreaker. Now that just seems terrific. So he can block two. I assume he blocks Tesa here and then whatever else. And then he'll take only a matter of three points of damage. We'll lose two creatures and get back. We're gonna we're just gonna play this and get sideways. Alright. So we're only getting through three points of damage here, but the opponent does have to block us. Got him! <laughs> oh, Tasa and your multiple death triggers, you devilish girl, you... Ah, uh, that felt good. All right, so uh, the deck is not not going well, but you're having fun with Grixis and Best of One Arena. He's done, son. That's right. <laughs> Those death triggers, right? All right, so we did see that our opponent's got some pretty sweet spells in his deck. Um. I think that Profane Procession is going to be great uh, to help us deal with the Phoenixes, things of that nature. Um, I'm not really wanting to get into the Argyle's Blood Fast battle with him, even though that may not be horrible. Ethereal Absolution could also be very, very good. Uh, because he has Phoenixes, if you ever kill the Phoenix, then the little token just naturally dies anyway. Uh, Ethereal Absolution could definitely be good, but we also seen Vivian, right? So, yeah. Yeah, this is the budget version. We didn't do so well with the mana base the first couple times we tried to roll through with the budget version. Dev said, hey, if you got the lands, upgrade them. And guess what? We had the lands. So I upgraded the mana base. Um, I went with four Godless Shrine, four Isolated Chapels, and one um, Orzhov Guildgate, giving us nine total um, split lands, and then everything else is uh, basic. So, what's up, Marcus? How you doing, sir? Um, haven't got a chance to check your stream out lately. Have uh, you been been streaming? It's a good time to advertise for yourself. Just let her rip there in chat. Uh, we want to consume things. Ethereal Absolution could just be the driving force to like to take us home, but um, I think the card that I like least is the Imperialist Oligarch. I thought this deck had Pitiless Pontiff in it. Is that the other deck? Um, like I want to bring in Duress and pull apart his hand because I, I think he's just got a ton of stuff going on, like some kind of Jun mid-range control deck and then a bunch of creatures. Like I think Duress might actually be right for this, this opponent. But then again, Kaya's Wrath is probably the right answer. So I, I'm just going to run with the Wrath spell. You did put up a video of Mono Red uh, list that I downloaded. Uh, I'm sorry, I just I downloaded it for title alone, man. I was like, no more Mono Red. All right, so we got uh, our one of um, Orzov Guildgate, which is going to hinder us just a little bit here with the um, turn one Haunted Witness. But we don't really have a two drop play. Could this hand be good enough? I mean, we, we don't 
We don't have a two drop, so I mean, I could always play this on two. And just get out our Haunted Witness and start going from there. And we're also on the draw. Sure. Alright, well, Haunted Witness is going to have to fill in the gap somewhere else. Because now I'd rather get out Orzhov Enforcer on too. It's just a little bit better Haunted Witness. See, now I can avoid life by playing this and then playing Haunted Witness. Hmm. I still want to get out Orzhov Enforcer and then Midnight Reaper next turn. I'm going to go ahead and play the Orzhov Enforcer and keep myself open to drawing a, a, another land that I, I won't have to pay life for. Rule Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker meets Death Touch? I mean, I will trade my Spellbreaker for... Like, I, I mean, I'll, I'll trade my Enforcer for a Spellbreaker. I, I think that that's a legit play. Five color treasure didn't quite prize out tonight. Went one and two. Mm, things might have changed a little bit there. Ooh, pitiless pontiff. See, that's that's pretty sweet. Because quite frankly. He will kill this. I'm going to pay the life. And I'm going to give him the option to kill my midnight. Like, so I, I thought about holding up... Um holding up an answer for um, you know the the Grove Chamber Guardian but instead I'm just going to play Tesa and try to gain a little bit of life back and see if I can get a couple cards like so I mean if he blocks this not only does he not have enough mana to put plus one with counters on it but he also has to give me two cards so I kind of felt like it was a safe swing Ooh, wow, just straight up. He's just going to use the adaptability right now. Gets another Grove Chamber Guardian. Plays the second Grove Chamber Guardian. And that is his turn. All right, well, we can go ahead and get this bad boy out. Do we let him just keep churning through these? Or do we kill one? Uh, I have another Tesa, so I'm, I'm willing to... Like... This feels kind of bad. Like, I want to kill the 4-4 so that I can apply more pressure. I'm going to kill the 4-4. But it, it does allow him to take this entire hit, and then next turn... Um, next turn, just do it again. Which, that's... Possibly going to come back to uh, to hurt him very shortly. I wouldn't mind finding a vindictive vampire. You'd kill it then swing. Yeah. Well, I was I was wanting to kill the uh, the the question was stop him from getting another one, or 
like how did we want to do it? Did we want to try to stop him from getting one or or what? And I guess we just keep going. Sure. Look at the stack. Oh my goodness. We're taking four, drawing four, and we're getting four additional mana. We're still going to have five mana here. We're going to get a ton of bodies. All right, um, so what can we do with all of this? Let's go to our second main phase, and how much mana do we need? If we go one, two, three. Mm. Another Tasa sets us up good for next turn. We can play the Godless Shrine. Play the Godless Shrine tapped. White. Black. White. White. And another one. And we'll pass the turn. So yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play it like that. Um, Taysa could be a little bit dangerous for us, but I mean we've got some lifelink, we've got some other stuff. So Angel of Grace saved you twice in one game tonight, and you won um, and won the game for you. Card is legit. Yeah, I like Angel of Grace. I I, I think the cards cards decent. I I haven't really um, I haven't really played with it a whole lot, but like it, the the stats on it look really good. I mean. Um, Five mana flash flying angel, five four. That alone got me excited. So, oh, opponent, that's not nice. Has he got a board wrath? One, two, three, and then one, two, three. So I'll block here to draw an additional card. I'll block here. We'll just stop damage. We'll get Pitiless Pawn. Like, I, I did this so that we could at least get two additional um treasures the two extra treasures mean that I can actually play profane procession and activate it within the same turn uh, which feels decent now the opponent needs to supply a good blocker or just ritual of soot all right Glad I didn't take the additional damage. Alright, so ritual of soot happen. Oh darn. So we'll get in for one. Play a plunder. Break our opponent's art. I'll pass. This, this just leaves open our our treasure. So now he has to deal with profane procession before he can deal with anything else. And I'm, I mean, without ooh, that'll. 
I'll give him a little bit of a an edge. That'll do it. Alright, so more land. Oh, Varaska. Either way, she uptakes and makes a creature next turn. At least this way I get to half his life total. I'll play the Enforcer and play the additional Plunderer. At least if some dies, we just get a ton of mana for it. So he creates a pirate. Scargan Hellkite. Ooh, the 5-5. Five five. Do you have other things you can do, opponent? All right, let's get sideways. We'll see what kind of kill spell he has. I mean, he's got the mana for a Bedevil. So, Bedevil could definitely happen. Okay, where's your Bedevil? Oh. How do you have the mana for that? Oh, the treasure. I didn't I didn't think about the treasure. That's right. All right, well, we make even more treasure. Kind of wish we had something to do with all this mana. I... Just gonna pass the turn. He's at one. I mean, if he swings at us, then I don't know what he's gonna do. Makes another. He's still got two cards in hand. Man, we really need to find our Blood Artist, right? Scargan sounds like a dragon pirate. It does, doesn't it? Scourge of the Seas. <laughs> uh... Come on. He's got one card left in hand. He has to shoot something down with his Scargan. Well, he wants to kill stuff. This Hellkite is doing work. Yep. All these things are happening. We Where's our rebel and riches? Um Sure. might be wrong. We're going to see if he's willing to or smart enough to actually to shoot down this Minister of Obligation first. He needs to use his mana to shoot down the Minister of Obligation so that we get our tokens. Yeah, he did it. He did it. Hmm. 
while the treasures banefire would be nice with all this treasure right anything would be nice that could use all this treasure so again i i was with you guys on the the play the we were, we were one point off we would have been so much further off if i'd have been trying to actually work at Verasca though come on just give me something give me something I just, I just, I just want a vindictive vampire. That does say when, when a creature dies, right? So even when vindictive vampire dies, it would do the little bit of ping. That's all I want. I just want a little bit, just a little bit. Oh, not like this deck. Don't peter out on me like this. Sanguine sacrament, all right? Something. Anything would be nice. Good old corrupt would be good. See any kind of X black burn spell, you know? That would that would do, that would work for me. All right. Well, oh. Unfortunately, this is not going to be enough, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. We need revel and riches, right? Menagerie. Menagerie might not be bad. Ton of ways you could you could build the, the Orzhov deck. Ravenous Chupacabra. My life total became one. No. Alright. So we're just gonna scoop. Those menacing vampires. Torment of Hellfire. Yes. Yes. Th that board state would have been wicked with a torment of hellfire. Alright, well. He's got a lot more Planeswalkers than I thought he did. And he, he's got a lot of other answers, so. I'm going to back off of my Haunted Witnesses. Actually, I'm going to back off of Gutter Bones. I don't know. We're on the play this turn. Yeah, I'm going to back off of Haunted Witness and keep Gutter Bones and go with this. And perhaps I should run something else, like uh, the consume or whatever but uh we'll see how about a lot with giant see there's a lot of things you could use these all sound decent no mana base why all right i'm going mulligan it was just way too much I just, it was way too much and then this is so slow and we'll put it on the bottom Yeah, anything would have been a good finisher there. But I don't, like, we just needed a Vindictive Vampire, honestly. Like, we could have used a number of things, but a Vindictive Vampire would have been great. No, it's whenever another creature you control dies. No. Growth Chamber Guardian. Think he can deal with this this turn? I mean, I can't do anything with it this turn, though. So my options are Duress or Profane Procession. If I play Profane Procession, I'm not going to activate it for another couple turns. Next turn, if I draw something, I'm going to want to use Pitiless Pontiff, or Pitiless Plunderer. Um, I wonder if this was supposed to be Pitiless Pontiff. Like this card just wasn't supposed to be in the deck. Because I could have sworn he said there was Pitiless Pontiff in the deck. Oh, well. I'm just going to go ahead and get the Profane Procession down. If he spends his turn, like, dealing with it, then that seems okay, too. If we don't hit a land, we can still duress next turn. And if we do hit a land, then... We need all of our little one drop, or our little uh, little dudes. Where's all of our two and three drops? All right, so there's the land. Yeah, let's play Ponders. It's 
So now if he threatens to kill this without removing the profane procession first, then we can start processing these. That's a guaranteed it's a guaranteed mana right there. Ooh, he paid the life. He's got something he wants to play here. Oh, it's whenever another Oh man. Paid the life and dealt with it. I gotta I gotta get used to this whenever another creature dies. Let's go ahead and duress our opponent and see if we can like snag a Vivian or something. Alright, what does he got? He's got Cast Down, Varaska's Contempt, um, Varaska herself, Ravenous Chupacabra, and a Growth Chamber Guardian. I actually think I'm willing to deal with most of this. Not so much so willing to deal with Varaska. Although I'm not 100% sure that we can come back from any of this. I think Plunder might have supposed to have been Pontiff. I don't know if that would have made a huge difference in the last game. Probably would have made a huge difference in us not having the the treasures. Yep, yeah, it's a good way to spend a turn. Got nothing better to do. Five mana growth chamber guardian. Five mana four four and get another copy of itself. All right, what do we want to take? So, what's the most devastating here? Contempt. Because everything we have, we want to die. Okay. I mean, this is this is eight damage coming at us, right? Cast down. Pretty sure this is over. I'm going to take the 8 damage and see if we can get something else here, but pretty sure that our opponent's gotten ahead of us here. You're waiting for my response. Oh, look, another Grove Chamber Guardian. How about that? Mortify. Yeah, we're dead, guys. We is dead. Let's go check something out real quick. Hang in there with me. Hang in there. Oh, look at that. Hey, Cyborg MTG is live right now. Dev. We gotta silence this. You guys are about to get an advertisement. Stop ad. Stop. Stop. Come on, acne dude. Stop. Alright, so the budget deck. Let's go ahead and look at the other deck too real quick. Alright, so with the budget list, if I pull it up, Pitiless Plunder. He's got Pitiless Plunder in it, but I could have sworn in the deck tech itself he was he had Pitiless Pontiff. So I think it is actually supposed to be Pitiless Pontiff. But hey. Easy mistakes happen. I pulled the wrong Esper list this week on meta coverage. This guy kind of, these type of things happen. Um Yeah, okay. So I, I think it's supposed to be Pitiless Pontiff. This deck doesn't have Pitiless Pontiff in it, does it? No. I think it's supposed to be the Pontiff, so. With your Merfolk Counters deck last night, had fun? Well, what's up, Derek? Glad uh, glad you could uh, join us for a live stream. I don't remember. Did you did you give me a, a solid thumping or what? Like, did, did, did you just clock me on the head with your Merfolk deck? I, I want to say that I lost most of the games I played last night, so. Anyway, 
Uh, we've got... Yeah, I, I think this is supposed to be Pitiless Pontiff. Standard. Oh, I need I need to pick from cards I don't have. I think it's supposed to be this card. And if we had four copies of this card, how would that have changed things? We would have been able to sack at will. Weren't really worried about sacking at will. Giving Death Touch and Indestructible might have been good. So, but yeah. All right, so this deck's not supposed to be able to make all those treasures anyway. Hmm. Who knows? The the uh, the plunderer might actually be better. I like it, in that matchup. We weren't really interested in sacking our own dudes. The, the opponent was doing a good job at killing our stuff for us. Uh, so maybe not. Yeah. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to the non-budget version of the deck. All right, so Dev has already prepared his mana base here, and he just didn't put the uh, the guild gate in. But um, I don't think he really has to. He doesn't have a lot of double black spells, and he's not needing those double black spells very early. So he's he's probably probably good. <laughs> Listen, to Marcus, every deck needs treasure. That's what the wee pirates are looking for. Um, <coughs> dad booty. Um, sorry, my bad. Um, haunted witness again. Type taker. A little bit of afterlife theme there, and slows our control opponents down. Cast down to give us a little bit of uh, removal, along with mortify. Plague crafter. Actually, a very good way to to sacrifice our own dudes. Tasa Karloff. We seen her just. Oh my goodness, she was so good with midnight reaper. Um, Seraph of the Scale is another Afterlife 2 creature that has a lot of value. I mean, this is one of my favorite Afterlife creatures, uh, mainly just because the 4-3 the flying bodies close enough to passing the vanilla test that I'm willing to just play it as is. But when you start tacking on all these other abilities, it's definitely a playable card. So Seraph of the Scales here, uh, one white to, to give it Vigilance, one black to give it Death Touch. And you get to swing for four, and if they kill it, you get two more flyers? It seems good. I was interested to see um, Devs running some Divine Visitation here. Wants to get that extra little bit of something out of his his creature's death. Yes, Lava Coil does, does deal with that quite well, doesn't it? <clears throat> um, Lava Coil will deal with both Tesa and Seraph of the Scales. Yes, yes, that happens. Uh, Orzhov Enforcer, still showing up here in this deck. I personally just don't think this card's got enough oomph to get you uh, get you through the game. But, you know, Death Touch is nothing to sneeze at. Uh, we're still seeing the Imperious Oligarch, which... She's so old. So ragged. Anyway, um, I just like Plaguecrafter in this deck, I think. A Johnny seems amazing. Like, this is exactly where I want to be with a Johnny. So, uh, yeah. Um, that's that's basically the gist of the deck. It's pretty straightforward. We've got Mortifies, Plague Crafter, Cast Downs to kill our opponent. We've got Midnight Reapers to help us draw cards. Taste of Karloff to help us just get more of the things we want to get anyway. We start looking at the sideboard. It's got a lot, in sim uh, a lot of similarities to the last deck, which Dev said so in his video. Uh, for duress, Argyle's Bloodfast still being in here. It's kind of a sack outlet. Um, honestly, with this deck, yeah, yeah, I would. With this deck, I think I would have played uh, Immortal Sun as my additional card draw. Uh, even though that's a little bit higher up on the converted mana uh, cost, I think Immortal Sun would have probably been really powerful in this deck. Um, but Ethereal Absolution's really good too. So, uh, consume is fun. Yes, consume is fun. I actually like this main board. I, I, I just th I think that there's very few decks where it's just dead because you can always just say, you know what, I don't like this card. Give me the next card off the top of my library. So, um, but 
I mean, he's got Ethereal Absolution in here, which you know is going to give our creatures the extra plus one, plus one, makes their creatures a little bit smaller, uh, and it's got a four mana token producer on it, which seems really good. We do have good late game mana sinks for the games that we are, are planning to go late in. Um, Profane Procession. I don't, I don't know, if, I don't know if that's where you want to be on a two of. Like we might want like a Voraska's Contempt. Like the the thing that worries me about this deck is. How do we really deal with a Planeswalker if we can't just slog through? And a lot of our creatures can't slog through. We, we're, we're not the the green deck slamming the big dudes down. And there's a lot of green decks slamming big dudes down to create a wall in front of their Planeswalkers. So, um, if I made any changes to this deck, I think I would have to put Immortal Sun in this deck somewhere. And you could probably just cut Argyle's Blood fast for it. Immortal Sun is just a great draw engine and you want to be playing things early in the game anyway. So, Anyway, if you guys want to check out Dev's Deck Tech, and again, it's up there. And if you are going to go do that, before you leave, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button here on Cyborg MTG. Alright. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's jump into let's jump into a game with the more competitive version of the deck. Do we have any Audible fans out there? People that like to listen to audiobooks? I We don't have much white, but we've got a couple turns to get it. And we've got turn two and turn three plays. I think I'm going to keep. S Immortal Sun or Sorcerer's Spyglass. Both help you deal with Planeswalkers, and Planeswalkers do appear to be the weakness to the deck. I... I'm going to lean to take Argyle, both Argyle's Bloodfast and one Ethereal Absolution out, put in two Immortal Suns and a Voraska's Contempt, take out one of the Profane Processions and put in a second Voraska's Contempt, and keep a Profane Procession. I think that would work. <clears throat> Like that—that that would be my immediate changes to the sideboard. Hey, look—he's got an Orzov Enforcer. So does this mean he has Judith or the Priest? The Priest. So now we trade Afterlife Dude versus Afterlife Dude. really want to draw a white source so I can play this Tesa. There's Judith. Oh, Judith. It's okay. Her ability goes on the stack. Um. Oh, man. Her ability goes on the stack first, doesn't it? Yeah, he's the active player. His goes on the stack first. Mine will have to resolve. Alright, so he gets to kill my token. There's that white source that we were looking for, though. He just shot me. Not the token. Just me. I am going to play Taste of Karloff here. Karlov. I'll wait. So Judith is a really, really important part of um, of the deck, and killing it is extremely important. However, killing the priest could be far more important. That's probably wrong cuz if he played crafters now I'm in a bit of a bit of a pickle. 
light up the stage. Okay. Let's see what he's got. Ooh, he's got a flame blade artist. Well, I like Seraph of the Scales. Am I willing to trade Tesa? Not really. Yeah. I, I I think we just have better creatures than he does, which is kind of hard to believe. I'm saving this for a priest. There's a Midnight Reaper. Flame Blade Artist. So this means he'll probably try to swing in. At least with something. No swings from the opponent. Alright, well I can go Godless Shrine tapped here. So now it's time to think about some things. Maybe I should have went planes and I could have given this Vigilance and got in. Maybe I still want to give it Vigilance and just get in. I think I do. So I should have played planes there. I'm not 100% sure that it's really going to affect the outcome, but probably should have just played the... Uh, played the planes. This way I could have at least held up the option to mortify. You're going to sacrifice your gutter bones so that you can just use a ton of mana this turn. He did sacrifice gutter bones. Targets me. And of course I take even more damage. And now he can pay two to get gutter bones back and pay another to play it. And It all seems fine. Activate light up the stage, which reveals Torgar, Feminine Incarnate. He's gonna return gutter bones from the from the graveyard. Pay one to play gutter bones, and then I think next turn we're killing a Midnight Reaper. Maybe it's right to kill Goblin Instigator. Still no swings from the opponent. Well... One, two, three, four... Yeah, I can do both. I want to mortify here though. Like instead of give the vigilance. Like I'm willing to swing for five. Almost willing to swing out. Good chance we lose a Johnny if I do. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna go like this. I 
So we know he's going to try to cast his Torgar, Famine Incarnate, right? And he can, as an additional cost to cast it, he can sack some dudes, right? Uh, which makes both Midnight Reaper and Judith seem really, really scary. But with the fact that we've got a 5-4 flyer, if he sacks three dudes for Torgar, I, yeah, I'm just killing Judith here. Like, I'm just going to do it before he can even get a priority to sack dudes and put you know put triggers on the stack. Just killing Judith seems right. I know he can ping something, but it just it it feels right. Now he's kind of got to be a little bit scared about how he loses creatures, because <clears throat> losing creatures means he's going to take additional damage, and if he can't actually finish a Johnny off, he's also going to. Um, I mean, he can, he can point some damage here towards a Johnny if he wants to. He sacrificed the goblin. Another Judith. Of course. Of course it's another Judith. Still don't know how he gets around. Seraph of the Scales. Judith will just kill us. Oh, Judith, she'll kill us. <sighs> she might. She could do it. He did it. I assume he's going to take his life total up a tick. Are you taking you up or are you taking me down, opponent? What are you going to do? Alright, so he draws a card. A little bit of damage here on the Midnight Reaper. A little bit more damage on Midnight Reaper. I'm going to draw a couple cards. Morzov Enforcer looks fine. There's a Torgar. Famine Incarnate. What a monster. Pretty cool. Big trouble. Little Judith. <laughs> the opponent scoops. He scoops. Because he... I don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. Um, he... Didn't do anything. Like, he... Just lost. Horribly. Horribly. I mean, he was dead in the air, but he should have took his life total back up. So. I told you that deck isn't isn't good. Yeah, the Judith deck's definitely... Like, I said that the other day when I was playing Dev's Judith deck. I was like, you know, these, these decks aren't that great. Um, they feel like they're going to be just doing amazing things. And, you know, we're going to be sacking stuff to the priest. And our opponent's going to have to sacrifice a creature like every single turn that we can produce two dudes. Disconnect. I don't, I don't, I don't show any disconnect over here. Yes, Rocker, you were late to the party. I'm just now seeing your, your message, my bad man. Um, I mean, we can haunted witness, haunted. <laughs> Getting into this, a Johnny could be great. We'll see what happens. I, I, I still think the hand keepable. Like so, I mean, we're on the play, and we get to pretend we're or we get to pretend we're a white weenie deck for like. Just a moment. I actually think those decks are priest or bust. So, like, Judith is good. And, you know, if you go, like, turn one anything, turn two um, Goblin Instigator, turn three, Ju turn three Judith, you swing for six. And that's pretty mean, so. Look at us. Look at that damage. Yeah. Get it.
turns out Johnny's a powerful magic card. Yes, he is. I have liked this magic card since uh, as soon as I, I seen it printed. I was like, ooh, a playable a Johnny. I mean, there's some restrictions. You, you kind of want to put it in a, a deck that's got some creatures in it, but you can kind of be flexible on what those creatures are. Oh, let me draw a land. Oh, great powers that be. Let me draw a land. I think I'm just going to Orzhov Enforcer here. This would be a great card to start putting plus 1-1 one, one counters on. Force removals hand here. I mean, our opponent's playing Simic Guildgates. Although, I, w I would still throw a Guildgate in this deck. More split lands the better. Like, I wouldn't put four Guildgates in the deck. <gasps> no. That's got to go. Ooh. We can no longer do anything, ladies and gentlemen. This is priority number one. That thing has got to go. It's just too much card advantage. You can't let them have it. Everybody was hating on him at first, and then a week after he was legal. And see, I like Domri. I think a Dom I think Domri is is perfectly acceptable and I think it's a better form at just adding Riot to your deck without adding Rhythm of the Wild. Rhythm of the Wild's interesting but I don't think it's 100% necessary. Hey we're getting there. Well, I'm not swinging into this. Oh, Gates of Blaze. Yep, seen that one coming. He still can't swing. I mean, he, m he might try, but I will stick two flyers. In front of that ram. Or two ground guys, actually. Ground guy. Ground guy. What I love about gates... This can't be blocked by more than one creature, can it? As long as... gets plus one for each gate. Yeah, okay, it can. What? The, there's a special text on one of the, the gate creatures. I think it's like he comes back from the graveyard. Every turn or something crazy like that. Ooh, Seraph. I would have played Tesa, but Seraph seems a better place to put some Ajani abilities up. Or Ajani um, counters up. But Gates of Blaze is... Um, is is great with cards like Gatebreaker Ram because Gatebreaker Ram's just got this natural two two, and then he gets bigger for every gate they have, and then Gates of Blaze just says does damage equal to the gates that you have, so naturally it'll just never kill the um, the Ram, which is pretty sweet. I mean, we're hitting for a healthy amount. <clears throat> Gates is um, mostly definite late game magic. And yeah, I mean, they just want to sweep, 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 and then like in the late game, their cards are going to be super powerful. But I, I just want to point out that how many cards he would have been able to draw, draw if we would let him keep keep his craziness there. So what else you got, opponent? What else you got? Another Gates of Blaze? Huh? Huh? 
Huh? Huh? That's what I thought. All right. Um. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna be out with the oligarch. Profane procession could destroy this deck all by itself. So, um, a lot of you are familiar with James Clugston, um, built the Grixis deck we played last night, and he's got a firm, firm strategy for de beating the Gates decks, and it seems to work pretty well. If you can stop the Guild Summit, right, and then just kill their, like, eight creatures in the entire deck, then they can't kill you. It's easier said than done, but... If you can manage it, you should be all right. Um, I am going to take some cards out, though. I mean, I, I want to be able to kill their their creatures and, and things of that nature, but I'm going to peel back on some things. Like, I don't think we need to get into Divine Visitation. Um, I really want Duress versus this deck, and I'm going to take out Haunted Witness to help me get there. Just use Ixalan's Mining on their Colossus and Ram. Easy wins. Exactly. See, you're saying the same thing, Jack. You know, like, as long as you can deal with the, the few creatures that they have, then you're kind of all right. It's kind of like fighting against the old blue black control decks that only had, like, six cre like six win cons in the whole deck. I can't keep this hand, guys. It's only one land. It's, it's playable. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's playable. That will help. Since we're on the draw, we've got we got a few car cards before we we're really begging for land. As of right now, though, I'm keeping the Tithe Taker to give me a, a turn two play that's not just killing something. Mm, right, but you may not want to let them try to mill themselves like you might not want to let them draw that many cards because they could have a nexus of fate there is a nexus of fate gates deck floating around out there um it's there does gates not run into run a couple copies of banefire i don't think so but they probably should Getting in there. Oh, yeah. And he's got Afterlife. Plaza of Harmony has been a really good card for the Gate stack. Just giving them that extra little uh, extra little life game. Boondocking Brawlers and Talkers. Shane. Hurricane Shane. What's up, man? Let's go ahead and get in for a little damage. Do a little damage. Make a little love. You guys can finish that. Banefire or explosion. I've, I've seen a couple different variants of the gates, and you're right. Like either of those could be highly plausible. Um, expansion, explosion, banefire, nexus of fate. Um, they they've got some other things that I just I'm telling you, don't let them keep a guild summon if you can avoid it. All the brutality. Land, 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 land. I mean, he might have another Gates of Blaze. I guess I'd be willing to deal with that, but... As of right now, we're going to try to get in for four. I mean, he runs four Gates of Blaze. I assume he's just, he's got plenty. Some main board spell pierce. I'm, if you're playing best of one, I'm going to say yes. I, I don't care what you're playing against. 
Spell Pierce has been one of the, like, in best of one on Arena, Spell Pierce has been absolutely terrific. Um, as far as, like, best of three, though, um, I mean, yeah, I, I guess you could mainboard Spell Pierce. I mean, you could even go with Quench, it just depends on, like, what your curve looks like. Spell Pierce normally fits into the curves a lot better than Quench, so. Mm, the Gate Colossus. This spell costs one less cat, one less to cast for each gate you control. Gate Colossus can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. And whenever a gate you control enters the battlefield under your control, you may put Gate Colossus from your graveyard on top of your library. All right. So let's say I want to put some plus one one counters up. I'm not going to play Taysa this turn. I'm going to try to cast down this Colossus. I mean, if he keeps spending turns to... Like, play a gate, get, get a Colossus back... Like, at this point, he needs to fire off Gates of Blaze again. And since he's got four Gates, it would have killed Tesa. Growth Spiral. He's digging for another Gate. And he played a land. He played a Forest. Lava Coil on a Spirit. Lava Coil on a Spirit. Oh, certain things just warm my heart. You know what? I'm going up. We're going up. This means he has to hit a gate in order to even play Gates Blaze to kill Tasa Karlov. And if we get to the cats, look how greedy can we be? Can we go to eight and then down tick? Or should I just sack the Ajani and say, hey. Flipping climb and killing your opponent. See, that seems... Okay. He, he's going to hit a Johnny for three. Draw three cards. I feel really bad that I didn't just play crafter him last turn. I'm just going to keep going up. I mean, he still has to stop us. Like, this is this is still happening. That's right. It's it's happening. We'll leave it at that. Brr, cat time. Yeah. We didn't get to the cats. So now he draws the um, the Gate Colossus, which he can cast fairly easily. He can even cast Gates of Blaze and kill um, Taysa Karlov. He should be at 6 now. Yeah, he's at 6.
What is this? Arcway Angel. That's a ton of life gain. He just gained 12 life. 12. Oh. What a pain. Serve of the scale seems good. Let's, let's go ahead and get some flyers, though, right? We get double afterlife triggers. I mean, does it matter? Sure, we'll put it on a flyer. The Ajani value has been great. All right. Not so worried about his 12 life now. He scoops. Scoops just can't deal with it yeah all right <laughs> a couple sweet games by devs deck here um yeah though as far as the cyborg goes again i i'm gonna say that the argyle's blood fast and like these four cards um I'm going to say these four cards are expendable as long as like some of the cards that you bring in have the ability to draw cards, right? So um, the reason I, what I would do is I would bring in two Immortal Suns over one of the Ethereal Absolutions and an Argyle's Bloodfast. And then I would just make the other two Veroska's Contempts just to give me some answers to Planeswalkers. And, um, I mean, you'd still have your fun of Ethereal Absolution. And there's going to be times where the card's just going to be absolutely broken. Um, but yeah, I, I would just want some answer against Planeswalkers, and, and Profane Procession is really good. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I would just you know take these four cards out, bring in two Immortal Suns and two Veroska's Contempts, and I'd, I'd feel real good about the deck. Um, as far as the main board goes, um, I like the options that he picked. Um, I love. I, I love Tessa Karloff with the Afterlife theme. She's really, really good. I It's taken me a little while to get on board with uh, the Tessa Karloff plan, but, man, watching you know things die with you know Midnight Reaper on the battlefield, and I get those lovely three words, draw a card. Oh, talk about a way to warm a Planeswalker's heart, right? Anyway, uh... Planeswalkers are hard to deal with for the gates. They are. They're really hard to deal with for the gates decks, and they're hard to deal with for a lot of strategies, which um, you know just screams to me that if I'm in a strategy that is in the colors that says, hey, you've got a good, clean answer to a Planeswalker right here, then I'm probably going to run it. Uh, now, that being said, you could force them to actually sacrifice their Planeswalkers with your Plague Crafter. I mean, you've got some answer to planeswalkers dev didn't leave us just you know empty handed here um he gave us the tools to fight with and we just fought against the fought against the gates deck which felt really really good and i don't get me wrong I'm, I'm probably going to play one of the gates decks for you guys here soon but um the gates decks are pretty powerful and i like to watch them lose <laughs> that being said, when I finally play it, I'm probably just going to get my teeth kicked in, but whatever. Um, do I think the deck should splash red for Judith or Bedevil? I would be splashing for Bedevil before I would be splashing for Judith. Um, as far as the main board goes, there's not a lot of open slots available. You could drop the Oligarch. I don't like the Oligarch. I, I, I just can't get behind the card. Um, I can actually get behind Orzhov Enforcer more than I can the Oligarch, and I don't like it Orzhov Enforcer either. It, it's not enough pressure. Um, it, when you're playing cards like Orzhov Enforcer, which is you know a two mana one two with Death Touch and Life uh, and Afterlife, 
it, it screams that, hey, I'm going to sit back. I need to create board stall for a little bit. And against a lot of the decks in the meta right now, that if you do get into some type of board stall type strategy, then you're probably going to get outclassed, right? Like, um, you're not going to board stall against a Hydroid Crassus. Right, I mean, it's it's got flying and trample. It's it's going to get huge. You're not going to board stall very well against a, um, you know, a number of the explore creatures and things like that. So, um, hero, hero of uh, six for oligarch. So hero would actually be a really good spot here if we had more multicolored spells. I think if you did bring hero in point you're you're going to want to start putting more emphasis on cards like um consecrate consume consecrate consume is actually a really really good card and uh, just bringing it into the main board like that would that would be a little bit smoother um you're going to want some some, some mul more multicolored spells for sure and technically you could actually get away with cards like uh, discovery even though you don't have the blue blue mana to cast the back half of it I mean, you could just draw some cards off of that but um, I, I'd probably just go over, go with the consecrate uh, just bring that into the main board um, as of right now though I mean the, the the shell he's got right here looks perfectly feasible and we just played it and it, it came through very nicely so um, and you know it could be lucky draws or whatever but yeah um, you can kill anything not flying at least. Um, that's what can kill anything non flying. What, what are we talking about, Justin? Anyway, Dev built us a really sweet version of Afterlife. So, if you're looking for a place to get started in building your Afterlife deck, start with this shell and go from there. Um, as you do some testing, you may find that you don't like some cards, and you may find that you really need some other cards. And if that happens, then make your changes accordingly. As far as this deck goes, I'm, I'm giving an A+. It was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, as far as the budget Afterlife deck goes, maybe try it with Pitiless Pontiff. But um, I kind of liked all the treasures, and it makes me think about, what can I do with all those treasures? Hmm. Definitely a solid shell. Absolutely, Rocker. It is definitely a solid shell and a great place to start. So, um, you, know, you know, Dev builds about 30 decks a season. They're not all, you know, blockbusters. This one's, this one's up there. This, one's a, this is a really, really decent deck if you want to be in, a, in the afterlife strategy. And um, I like it. I, I like everything he's got going on in the deck. Seems like Seraph of the Scales and a Johnny might just be a combo to just end games quickly. Oh, man. That felt good. It did. Like, a Johnny just felt great. Um, I, like, a Johnny may be the best takeaway from these decks is if you're going to be making a bunch of little tokens, make them bigger. Make them bigger. Anyway, that's all I've got for tonight, guys. I did. This was really, really fun. It was a fun deck. I hope you guys had a lot of fun watching it. Thank you for watching Cyborg MTG. If you want to help support the channel, there's a number of ways you can do it. All are in the description box below. Just hit that show more and you can find all the links. If you want to check out the, the links for these deck lists, they're there as well. Don't forget to go over and watch and like Deb's deck. If you leave a comment over there and say, you know, you watch the gameplay for this deck over on my channel, that would help out a ton as well. Um, and any, any way you can, can share, you know, the, the video, whether you're doing it on Facebook, you know, it doesn't cost you anything to hit share. If you got a lot of friends that like magic, then do that. Um, oh man, I think I lost everybody right in the middle of my going like, no, oh well. Either way, my name's Eric. I had a lot of fun. Hope you had fun. We'll see you next time.